the past, as a student at the University of Southern California here in Los Angeles, I made it a goal to attend as many road games for the Dallas, the, the Dallas Stars played in as possible. Up until my senior year, though, I didn't have a car, so that made that goal a tad difficult, as I had to rely on friends who had cars who were either Kings or Stars fans that went to USC. That's kind of a small group of people. And since this was my last semester here at USC, and I actually had a car, I decided I would attend as many Stars games in all California arenas as possible, starting with the Kings on March 7th. There initially was an issue, though, with attending this March 7th game because I had a night class scheduled that day. But then I thought about it for literally a second later and said to myself, yeah, the game is more important. Now, I'm not advocating... Anybody to cut class to go to a start to go to any hockey game, but if your team is in town at Los Angeles, I suggest going. Now I am that is me being a terrible influence on society. Anyway, one thing about Staples Center that I learned from my first Stars Kings game back in 2011 was that the 300 level seats aren't very good. The Sta- Staples Center's 100 and 200 level seats are built really close to each other. But the arena has three layers of box seats, if you haven't been there, three layers of box seats between the 200s and 300s, and the 300-level seats are steeper than the rest of the arena seats. They're just, the seats are uh, in that section are just way too high. So if you want to go to a game at Staples Center, make sure you buy seats that aren't higher than the 200s. Also, if you're going to a game at Staples Center, or just any game in general, buy your tickets from StubHub the week of the game. The reason for this is some people who, who will have tickets to the who who have tickets to this game, they're gonna find out r- like right before the game that they can't make it, and then they're gonna try to sell those tickets off for anything they can get for them. And for this game, I actually found two premium seats at Staples Center for thirty five dollars a piece. Those are one hundred dollar tickets face value. So it's amazing what you can find on StubHub. Now, if you want to find cheap parking, if you have never been to a game at Staples Center, find a parking garage in downtown L.A. north of Staples Center because the parking garages at L.A. Live tend to get a little pricey because they they charge you by the hour that you're there. And also, parking north of Staples Center in, down, in the downtown area is generally a lot cheaper. And it, you're going to have to walk a little bit further, but you're going to find parking under $10. And plus, if you want to find the bar scene, go to the, go to the 7th Street Grand Avenue area. There's 7 Grand. That's a whiskey bar. But also, if you get a little bit north on Grand Avenue, you'll find Irish or Casey's Irish Pub, excuse me. And I'm kind of a fan of Irish pubs personally. Also, if you're a road fan going to a game at Staples Center or just any any arena in general, go with a friend. You're going to want to highlight. You're going to want to high five. Pardon me. Somebody when your team scores. Now, while I had a car to the, while I had a car this year, I actually didn't drive to Staples Center this when I went to this game on March 7th. I did not drive to Staples Center because the LA Metro finally finished constructing last April and it runs right by campus here, so I just jumped on that. Now, I also took a bunch of photos on this trip, but unfortunately those will not translate over the air, so I will not just talk about them other than the fact that I took pictures right in front of Wayne Gretzky statue and just the scene around LA live anyway so one thing that's very clear about Kings fans that I learned actually of course I'm just joking here Kings fans do not like Steve Ott and guess whose jersey I have Steve Ott's there, when, I, when we got to the arena, there was actually only one way to get to the premium seats, which was interesting, because they blocked it up from blocked it off from the rest of the arena. I'll skip the boring part where we had to go through the VIP entrance, listen to some Kings fans trying to tra- talk trash to us, and then walk down our own private concourse to our seats, where we discovered we had in meal service. We paid thirty five dollars a piece for these seats, and once again, this is why StubHub is. Awesome. Now, the Staples Center, for some reason, really loves using lasers as part of their pregame presentation. There, It's very extensive use of them. They have lasers shooting across the arena, all four corners of the arena. And they're bright green, too, which I'm not sure what that has to do with the Kings, but that's not my decision. That's not my opinion to matter. 
Before each period, the Kings scoreboard shows the team leaving through the locker room before, or leaving the locker room through castle doors. Now, the very picky fan in me thinks this could be a little bit cooler if they substituted showing the video of the Kings leaving through the castle doors with the team actually skating through a physical castle wall near their bench that they could deploy before the game starts. What would be really cool, and this is the chaos, this is somebody who wants to see a lot of chaos, what would be really cool is if the Kings rode, <laughs> rode through that, that castle I mentioned earlier on horses like most historical Kings did, except that would be a total safety hazard and it's obvious why they don't do that but it's something that i would like to see in my dreams staples center does blare the goal horn when the team hits the ice for the start of each period and if you're if you're not ready for it you're going to jump because it is a lot louder than it sounds on television now before the puck drops staples center this is unique to the games that the Kings play against the Dallas Stars. Staples Center plays a video of Eric Cartman from South Park dressed as a cowboy discussing what he would do if he was a Dallas Stars fan. It's extremely stereotypical. So if you're a Stars fan, you got to take that with a grain of salt. And as he's, as he's about to say this is what he would do if he was a Stars fan, he actually explodes and becomes a Kings fan and then leads the Staples Center into a Go Kings Go chant. Now, if you're wondering why Eric Cartman is at Kings games and not Avalanche games where South Park is based in Colorado. The creators of South Park are actually Kings fans. Now, during the game, I always behave in road venues as anybody else, as I would anybody else's house. Don't be obnoxious and treat the home fans with respect. These are simple guidelines to follow, but they will get you far. For the most part, Kings fans immediately around my friend and I, who I I went with one friend, the Kings fans around us were pretty chill and actually conversed with us peacefully. And this has been true for every Kings game I've been to at Staples Center. And I'm hoping this trend continues when I go to future games. One particular fan, though, a few rows behind me, tried to get my attention by screaming some of the most un- intelligible sounds that I've ever heard at my direction, but I never acknowledged him. Then he, that same fan, started screaming at other people, so it was clear he had a little too much of Grandpa's old cough medicine before the game started. Now, when it comes to celebrating a goal in a road venue, it's extremely gratifying. Now, for this for Stars fans, it's one thing to be a Ducks or Sharks fan celebrating a goal at Staples Center because you will probably have a lot of friends with you to celebrate that goal. It's an entirely different and awesome feeling to be one of 30 Stars fans in the building standing up and cheering Yarmir Yager scoring the first goal of the game. Except when Trevor Lewis shot the tying goal over Kari, that kind of sucked as a, watching that as a Stars fan. The fans around me, though, however, didn't give me any, didn't give me a hard time because I didn't talk trash to them when Yager scored. I minded my own business with my friend. And usually, hopefully, when you mind your own business as a as a fan, the road fans, or excuse me, the home fans won't bother you. The Kings really like the Adams family theme for some reason, except the Kings fans add their own lyrics to it. During the gaps in the, sta- the sound, the Kings fans yell in rhythm, Stars suck, or whoever they're playing that night. As far as I know, I don't think those are the words to the Adams family theme, but who am I to judge? I happen to be a, part- a pretty intense hockey watcher when I'm, at it, when I'm at an arena. And on this particular night, for some reason, I was just really intense, and I was leaning forward very far in my chair. The Kings fan behind me noticed this and said something along the lines of, Dude... You are way too intense for this game. It's a 1-1 tie. You've got to relax. Yeah, you know, he was right. First intermission was <laughs> a tad interesting. Let's just say that. There were two guys who were given f- shirts that were frozen solid. And there was a contest between the two of them to see who could free the shirt from the ice and put it on before the other guy to win a Toyota. Meaning they were shirtless on the ice trying to break free a shirt that was frozen solid, and then trying to put it on. It was quite a spectacle. There was a, one of the, the guy who did win that contest was a little too drunk, and unfortunately, the arena 
per, the arena staffers put a microphone in front of his face, and he when they asked him how he felt about winning, he yelled bleep yeah very loudly into the mic, prompting every child in the arena to probably ask their parents what that word meant. And everybody watching this guy try to break the shirt just knew he was hammered because he was his movements weren't smooth at all. It it was I'm I can't say I'm surprised that he ended up cussing when he was through from winning a new car. The Kings do not have many banners hanging from their side of Staples Center, but the championship banner for the Stanley Cup they won last year is actually fluttering around like a sail. That's because the Kings put a fan above the banner so it stands out more than the rest of their banners. Now, during the second intermission, I actually stayed in my seat during the first intermission just to try to relax myself. During the second period, the Staples Center honored the hero of the game during the second period. That was that night. It was Corporal William Cushenberry. I apologize if I mispronounce your name. Thank you for your service. This brought an obligatory and well-deserved standing ovation from the entire arena. During a commercial break, though, the arena featured Dustin Penner answering this or that questions about Los Angeles. When the question USC or UCLA prompt popped up on the screen, it seemed like the entire arena was yelling USC. I don't know. It may have just been me yelling over everybody else. I'm not exactly sure. But Penner answered correctly. He said USC, which prompted some of the loudest cheers heard in the building that entire game. Stompin' Tom Connors, I talked about him in my show a, a, a last month. He had passed away the day before this game, and a lot of arenas in the NHL were paying tribute to him by playing the hockey song. The arena wanted everybody to sing along to the song and even displayed the cool lyrics on the screen. And I was, despite that, I was only one of two people in my section who knew what the song was as I used it to open this show. And then right after that, Jeff Carter scored and the Kings were up 2-1. to one. So that, again, wasn't fun to watch. Goal, the scoreboard during the goal celebrations is rather interesting. It briefly stops showing the player who scored, and then it cuts to a random clip of whatever it where, wherever they could find these clips, probably somewhere on Google, of people either dancing or celebrating. The first one they showed was a, just a random kid high-fiving a line of people. This particular one, it, I think it was some somebody at a ping-pong game dancing and celebrating after, after, after winning a point. But either way, they, it's kind of a funny thing to watch, and it's something that I haven't really seen in any other arena that I've been to. And because, once again, I did not establish right away that I was an obnoxious fan, there wasn't much heckling from the fans immediately surrounding me. And this made watching the stars trail a little bit more, or trail a little more bearable. And since it's a Kings game, they need more Cartman, and they put him up on the screen yet again. This time, they, this was a new animation because of what happened last June when the Kings won the Stanley Cup. Cartman came out of the Stanley Cup and led another Go Kings Go chant. And somehow, the Dallas Stars' power play was really good that game. Cody Eakins' goal when he, when he skated past the defense and then put a back in over Jonathan Quick was a very, very nice goal. And when, when I was celebrating that goal, I saw another Stars fan in the section to the right of me. And once he saw me and realized that he wasn't the only Stars fan in his vicinity, we pointed at each other, nodded to each other and to non-verbally say, yeah, we're awesome. We're the only ones celebrating this goal. When you go to road games, you instantly make new friends when you see people wearing your team's colors. Second intermission was a little interesting. The second intermission entertainment was what I believe were circus tricycles trying to race around the rink. So thankfully, there were no shirtless men trying to break open a frozen shirt. And it obviously, you could probably predict this, the tricycles were very difficult to handle, judging by how poorly the riders rode around them in the arena. They probably could have gotten around faster if they ran on the ice. It might have been a more, little bit more entertaining, too. This is, again, me just being a really picky fan. And honestly, who doesn't want to see chaos on the ice? I mean, you see that normally during the games, but why can't we see that during the first half in, or the first intermission entertainment part of me? After that, I ventured out into the concourse to see what the premium section offered. There's a pretty upscale bar by where we were, except... I didn't look at the prices of whatever they were or whatever they served because it was probably something really expensive, which is probably a little bit more expected because it is a premium section in the seats. And while I was there, 
I don't know what the deal is, but Chicago Blackhawks fans are everywhere. And they, there was a somebody, there was a woman wearing a Patrick Kane jersey. And there's a little mini rant here. I don't understand why fans show up to games wearing jerseys of teams that aren't even playing. It, it's just a mini rant of mine that doesn't make sense. Support a team that's actually there, not wear a jersey of a team that's not playing. That's that's just a mini rant right there. And there was a bunch of memory. There was a gigantic display memorabilia, also way out of my price range. Some of that included a Wayne Gretzky photo, a chip. It was probably autographed a Chick Hearn, a legendary broadcaster for the Los Angeles Lakers, a Chick Hearn art. And there was also a signed basketball there, too. There were also a bunch of photos commemorating the Stanley Cup championship from last year. I was also starting to get a little hungry and decided to take advantage of the in-eat meal service. But what I learned is that there is only one person that is designated to take orders in your section. And if you ask another person near your section who isn't assigned to your section, he or she won't take your order. At least that's what happened to me. Maybe it was the Steve Odd jersey. I'm not sure. After waiting a rather frustrating five or so minutes, we finally found our guy and ordered our food before the period started. I mean, hey, we had premium seats. We can complain about first world pains, whether we, whether it's warranted or whether it's fair or not. I have to say the food service was pretty clutch when the thir- after the third period began. Seconds after the Staples Center employee delivered my turkey burger, Brendan Morrow scored one of the softest goals ever and the Stars took the lead. And... The burger was actually pretty good, by the way. So if you're ordering a turkey burger from the in-service, in, uh, the in-seat meal service, you're gonna you're you're gonna like it. Now, not too long after that, Yager scored, and that really took the air out of the building. That was the second goal that Yager scored in this game. And now that Yager's with the Boston Bruins, I have to say it's pretty awesome that I got to see a legend in Yager score two goals for the Stars. That's something that I'm going to remember for quite a while if not the rest of my life and when the Kings fans when the excuse me when the Kings take a lot of penalties the fans really don't like it in fact they chant very loudly ref you suck the Kings fans behind the Kings fan behind me who I mentioned earlier as he told me to show up he actually happened to be a USC fan so my friend also a Trojan and I found common ground with him which is nice if you, happen to, if you happen to be hearing this, said Kings fan, fight on, sir. Later in the period, Antoine Roussel buried an empty net goal, and then there was a mass exodus out of the arena. There was 141 left to go in the third period. And now, I kind of broke my rule when I said don't be a jerk, as I took a bunch of photos of the fans leaving the game, which I admit was not a nice thing to do. And... The game ended, and luckily we did find a Kings fan who was nice enough to take a couple minutes out of her time to take our picture with the ice in the background. So all in all, it was a 5-2 win for the Stars and a good experience nonetheless. Now, would it have been a little different if the the Kings had won this game? Oh, undoubtedly. I've been to a Stars-Kings game where the Kings won, and that was not fun walking out of that arena. This is also why I also make it a goal of mine to try and establish good relations with the fans surrounding me so a loss hopefully won't be as bad. The only fans I have had issues with in the past at Staples Center are fans who are within yelling distance of me, but no closer than that. Other than that, overall, I've had pretty decent experiences at Staples Center. Coming up next, what is it like to go to a game at Honda Center as a road fan? You were listening to KXSC. Always on the air at 1560 AM radio, on the web at kxsc.org, and on your smartphone on the TuneIn Radio app. We will be right back. <laughs> 